Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some freezer meal prep. And before we get into the video, I just want to be very clear. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I have no formal training in this as well. Not a skilled chef. So from a practical perspective, you're probably going to see a few errors, but it's all a learning curve. And I just wanted to share some easy meal ideas with you. So for the first meal, I'm preparing two servings of steak with cut up peppers and onions. So to prepare the steak, I'm just mixing some olive oil with some minced garlic. Of course, you could just buy garlic and mince it yourself, but I don't have time for that. So I just bought the big old jar of it. And you can see I'm just brushing that oil and garlic on the steak. And then I'm seasoning it with some pepper and salt. And I'm doing that on both sides. It's crazy to me because I used to be able to eat a steak that full size and now the plan is that that's going to feed my husband, myself, and my daughter. I don't eat a lot of red meat anymore because it oftentimes does hurt my stomach, but I'm holding out hope for this one. And here I'm just slicing up these baby mini sweet peppers. I've never tried them before, but I've heard that they're very good. So we're giving them a go. I'm just cutting them in half so that they have a pretty good size to them because I plan on cooking this in the slow cooker and I don't want them to get too mushy. So there they are all prepared. Also, we're going to be working on the angles and the lighting and all that situation. But for today, this is what we're working with. And then I'm just throwing all of that into the freezer bag. Also, you're gonna see the soy sauce in the background for quite some time. I don't actually use it in anything in this video, so just pay no attention to it. I thought I could get all of the meals prepped in one video, but we would have been here for far too long. All right, and I've just sped up the footage a little bit for the onion chopping. I'm sure there is a far more technical and more efficient way of doing it, but it got the job done at the end of the day, and these are just regular sweet, onions, nothing fancy. I just bought like a two pound bag of them and you're going to see them over and over again in this video. I think I used every single one of these onions, which is awesome. There was no waste there. And I'm just adding that into the freezer bag. Then I will squeeze out as much of the air as possible. And I now have two meals for three of us. You'll hear me talk about these meals being for my husband and possibly for my daughter as well. It's because I have a four-year-old son who is very, very selective in what he'll eat. And there is no way I will get him to eat steak. I can tell you that right now. So this will feed the three of us uh, two different meals at any rate. So now we are moving on to the second meal. And this is actually what we're going to be eating for dinner tonight as I'm filming or doing the voiceover. And this is basically a lemon pepper chicken. So I bought the chicken that was already pre-sliced into little fillets. In retrospect, I should have cut them at this point, at least into half, if not thirds, but I will take care of it. Now that it's out of the freezer and they're still a little bit dense, I will cut them up before I cook them tonight, just so that we get more chicken out of the deal. Uh, and then I'm going ahead and zesting the lemon. Pro tip, we'll put pro in air quotes, but don't zest it all the way down to the white of the rind because that's where all the bitterness is but that nice bright yellow part is where the oils are and it just brings out that lemony flavor. So now I'm cutting the lemons in half, although really I probably only needed to cut one in half. The other one I do end up slicing. The sliced lemon actually does hold up really well in the freezer, both in terms of the texture and in the flavor. So don't be scared, I guess, of slicing or freezing sliced lemons, but at any rate, I have gone ahead and sliced that up. I'm gonna throw those into the bag just to, again, help with flavor, especially as it is defrosting and sort of marinating in its own juice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and juice the other lemon so that I can add that to the, um, to the freezer bag. And then I am cutting up some fresh parsley and you'll see a few stems. I wasn't quite careful enough uh, removing the stems first. So again, it's a learning curve, but at any rate, we have some fresh parsley, chopping that up as finely as I can. I'm actually on the hunt to replace my chef's knife because this one is very old and quite dull. Uh, regardless, added the parsley to the bag and now I'm using a lemon pepper seasoning salt that I picked up at Bulk Barn 
and just adding about two tablespoons or so in there. A lot of this is just kind of guesswork, but giving it a nice massage and again, squeezing out as much air as possible. And that brings us to our third meal. So now I am starting the prep for some enchiladas that I'm going to be making. And then we're gonna see a little bit of another meal component coming in. So while I'm prepping the enchilada meat, I'm also preparing ground beef and cut up bell peppers and onions for spaghetti sauce. So I'm basically just doing all the grunt work that would go into spaghetti sauce so that the day that we decide to have it, I can just throw it into the slow cooker with some marinara and let it cook while we're at work. But back to the enchiladas, you can see that I'm just really finely dicing up that onion and then we're going to move on to cooking the meat. So into an already oiled cast iron pan, I'm just adding some garlic and then I'm going to go ahead and add the onions as well, although really if I wanted those onions to caramelize, I probably should have cooked them first. These are the things that I'm learning in watching other people's meal prep videos, but this is how we did it for today. They are very finely diced, so the cook time is a little bit shorter for them in any event. And then obviously just added in the ground beef and I'm gonna let that all cook together. So switching gears, this is the prep for the spaghetti sauce base. I apparently forgot to uh, film the chopping of the green pepper and the onions, but it looks largely the same as what I'm doing to the celery So nothing too exciting there But these are the veggies that Barry and I both really enjoy in our spaghetti sauce So I am doing them on a bit of a thicker cut so that as they're warming up in the slow cooker They still have like a little bit of a crunch to them. I don't like my veggies to be super mushy So that's why they're a little bit bigger back over to enchiladas and I'm seasoning the ground beef with some taco seasoning and also some taco sauce. You could use enchilada sauce as well. I really don't know what the difference is between the two, but this was just a convenient format of this bottle and good size for what I'm doing as well. But definitely want to season your meat, even if it's just salt and pepper. Seasoning your meat while cooking is so much better than just seasoning it after. Um, but at any rate, there you see the meat there and it's just going to continue to cook until it is cooked all the way through. All right, and on to the spaghetti sauce base again. I'm just adding some olive oil to a nonstick pan. You can use nonstick or cast iron. I just happened to only have one cast iron and it was in use already, so I switched over to my nonstick pan and then added a generous amount of minced garlic to the bottom because it's gonna go into spaghetti and what better spice for spaghetti than garlic. And then to the garlic, I'm going to add the veggies. I don't really know technically if I should cook the meat first and then add the veggies or if doing it this way is okay. That was like one of those blind moment of panics that I had during this whole process. It's like, I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. Never really cared until I filmed myself cooking. But at any rate, we got her in there and then you will see in just a moment that I did push the veggies over to the side after they'd been cooking for a little while and made some room for the ground beef. You can see me raising my arm there. I'm just adjusting the um, temperature of the burner. Our stove is wildly aggressive. So when they say, you know, bring it up to medium heat, that's like level two on my <laughs> stove. It's crazy. It's so, so aggressive. But again, just cutting down that meat. I wanna get one of those like actual meat chopper upper things. I, it, I don't know what it's actually called, but I have it added to my Amazon wish list. So I just uh, have a few other items that I am debating what I wanna get, and then I'll just place one order, but it will definitely be easier than doing it with this plastic spatula because it's a little bit flimsy for this job. Then again, I'm adding some salt and some pepper to the beef just to season it while it cooks. I love this little salt dish. It makes me so happy. I don't know why. Barry thinks I'm funny, but I just love it. it makes me feel a little bit professional, I guess. And then adding in a bunch of this parsley because I had so much of it. And then I just stirred everything together, but for some reason my camera only wanted to focus on my boob and not the actual frying pan, so thanks for that camera. Um, but here's what stirring meat looks like. I'm sure you've all done it a million times. Back to the enchiladas. Let me know down below, guys. Do you mind if I jump around a little bit? I just like to show that I'm multitasking, but if it's easier for you guys to see it, 
meal by meal all in one shot, let me know. Again, learning curve here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shred up some cheese. The pre-shredded stuff is totally fine. The only thing is that it's just not as fresh, like there's a bit of cellulose on it, so it doesn't taste as good as if you just take the time to shred it yourself. And really this whole process didn't take that long for me to do. Also, that soy sauce bottle in the back is chapping my ass. I'm so sorry, I'm sure nobody else even notices it or cares, but I know it's there and I know it doesn't belong, so it's driving me nuts. Anyways, I had some orange peppers here. And so I just sliced them up thinly and I figured I may as well add them to the enchiladas because we need a veggie. So I'm just adding that in there. I don't actually like orange pepper. Um, I don't like it raw. Like I would never just snack on orange pepper or red pepper for that matter or yellow. I only like green. But once it's cooked up and especially if it's like wrapped up in a tortilla with some cheese and some ground beef and different seasonings, I don't even taste it. So it's just a way for me to get a nice healthy veggie in there, eat the rainbow and not have to force myself to do it. So it's just a little trick that I use on myself. So now we have a very jumpy <laughs> panning just to show um, all the components for the enchiladas. For these, I just used plain white tortillas. Um, you'll see in another video that I have coming up that I used keto tortillas for some quesadillas that I made. That would be perfectly fine as well, but these ones were the right size, like they're a smaller, like a mid-sized tortilla. And honestly, it just wasn't worth it for me to spend the extra money on the keto ones for this. The quesadillas, I'm usually the only one who'll eat them, so then I'll, I'll invest for the keto, but Barry likes the plain ones. Um, Aspen, I don't know if she'll actually eat these. If she hears there's peppers on them, she probably won't, but she might try it. She's getting to the age where she'll try. Bennett, absolutely not, unless it's a chicken nugget. So if you have ideas on fussy toddlers and how to feed them, please let me know down below what your fail safes are because that kid doesn't like anything and it's exhausting. So at any rate, you can see the process here, adding some sour cream, adding some beef, some cheese and then the peppers and then a squirt of this enchilada sauce on top rolling it all up and placing the seam down now what i forgot to do was spray this pan so i might have a bit of a nightmare on my hands when i actually go ahead to cook it but uh, time will tell we shall see but this is a little disposable tray as you can see and then it has like a plastic lid which you will i think see momentarily and um it just fits nicely into our deep freezer, keeps everything all contained, and then I can just pop that right into the oven and I don't have to tie up a sheet. So we've got quite a few there and then I just sprinkled the remaining shredded cheese on top. I thought it was a little bit of an anemic serving, so I reached into the pre-shredded bag that I had and just topped that up. I could have shredded some more, but I knew that I wanted that cheese for another recipe, so I just went ahead and added some of the pre-shredded stuff right to the top. And I had some orange pepper slices left over, so I just added those as well so that I didn't waste them. I sprinkled a little bit more taco seasoning on top, and then I used the rest of the enchilada sauce just so that there was some sauce on there. And then these are gonna go into the freezer, and then it's just a really easy dinner ready to throw into the oven and there's enough there that we'll have leftovers for the next day as well. Back to the spaghetti sauce base and I'm just making sure everything is cooked through cutting up that meat a little bit more yet again and then I went ahead and put it into Tupperware containers let them cool a bit covered them up and then they are ready to go. We have already used one of these and it worked out absolutely perfectly. So now we have the other one ready to go as well. And it's just so convenient to have all of the hard work done in advance. All right, now we are on to an egg bake. So I bought a 30 pack of eggs and into this bowl I cracked 15 eggs. You can see I have some onion already diced up and some green onion as well. The green onion is going to be for egg salad. What you don't see is that I have eggs boiling. Well, I have water. What? I have eggs in a pan with the water coming to a boil on the stove. Wow, that was abnormally difficult. 
Anyways, there we go, cracking those 15 eggs into the bowl. Does anybody else do a one-handed egg crack? My husband watched me like completely fascinated slash horrified that I was doing it that way, but th it's just so fast and convenient. I don't know, anyways, giving it a stir, whisking it all up, making sure all of those um, egg yolks are broken and getting it as smooth as possible. I didn't show it in this clip, but I did add a little bit of milk to it. You could go ahead and use water if you prefer. And now I'm going in seasoning. So we've got the salt, we've got some pepper going on in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, what am I doing next? Ham. So this is gonna be more of like a Western omelet kind of style. So dicing up the ham into nice small pieces. These little pre-cooked ham steaks are so convenient especially for this purpose. I don't have to actually cook a ham and then dice it up, but also if I just want to have one of these for dinner, it's just a matter of warming it up in a frying pan and it's just so convenient. At any rate, going ahead and dicing it all up and I will also be adding some peppers and some cheese into this egg bake as well. And while I'm dicing up this pepper, I will go ahead and let you know that I am going to type out the recipes down below. A lot of this was not like strictly measured, so it's really to taste and what your preferences are. Where I can, I'll put some guidelines in terms of what I used, or at least what I think I used, but definitely those are estimates. This really is, this is my kind of cooking, to be honest. Like. It's not particularly technical and I don't have to measure out a bunch of stuff. Also, as you're seeing, there's really not a lot of ingredients per, um, per episode. Wow, that was strange. Per recipe. That's where I get overwhelmed. If there's like a million different things that I need to gather in order to make a meal, it's just not going to happen because that's just way too much effort. So using the items that I typically have on hand anyways, and obviously in this case, I did go out and prep for this by buying a massive amount of groceries. If you haven't seen that video, I will try to stick it in a card or at least link it down below. But there we have that egg bake done. And here is the water now to a boil. So when I do boiled eggs, I put them in cold water, bring it up to a boil, cover it, and then turn the heat off and let them sit for about 15 to 16 minutes. And that's a perfect hard boiled egg for me. So now on to egg bake number two, and I am just slicing and dicing some onion. This would actually work really well with red onion as well, but because I had that two pound bag of sweet onions, that is what I used. But this is gonna be more of like a feta and tomato egg bake. I'm not a huge fan on tomatoes, to be honest. Like I'll eat the odd slice of tomato on like a burger or on a sandwich, but I'm not a huge tomato fan. However, you put it in this egg bake and I couldn't even taste it. Like it was just the right amount, the right consistency. There has got to be an easier way to cut tomatoes than what I have subjected myself to in this video. But again, at the end of the day, it got done. It's just that there was a little bit of a struggle going on. And actually I gave myself a blister from all this chopping. I had a little blister on my finger, which was I was oddly proud of that. <laughs> I have a cooking injury. Anyways, going ahead, chopping up all of these tomatoes. So as with the other one, I've just gone ahead and cracked 15 eggs into the bowl and then given them a good whisking. Again, I didn't show myself adding some milk, but Americans in the crowd might have been curious to know that yes, we do have bagged milk up here. It was in the original footage, but I just cut it out for time, I guess. At any rate, here we are adding some salt and pepper and then giving that a good mix again. So I sprayed the bottom of the pan with some cooking spray, added the eggs, and now you can see me adding the onion and the tomato. And then I did have a yellow pepper left over. And again, I don't like raw yellow pepper, but I chopped it up and added it to the egg bake. And again, this was actually delicious, even though the component parts aren't really things that I love. You mix them all together and it worked out really well. And Barry really enjoyed this as well. We are now completely finished with this egg bake. I brought the other one out and it is defrosting in the fridge. We have sliced it up into individual portions and it just makes breakfast in the morning so easy. 
The final step was to add some low-fat feta. I used the dry crumble rather than the stuff in oil just to make it so much easier to add to the pan. And now we are on to a sausage stir fry. I think the next time I make this that I am just going to get sausage meat or decase sausages like this because cutting these was kind of a pain in the ass if I'm being perfectly honest and I haven't cooked this one yet so I'm not sure how it's going to cook up with that casing still on it. I guess time will tell but I think this just would be so much easier buying it already decased. It did get a bit easier when I was able to grab multiple sausages in my hand, but my stumpy little hands will not hold five sausages at a time. I'm sure there's a wildly inappropriate joke in there somewhere, but it's low hanging fruit and I am not going to make it. So by now you might have realized that one of my favorite vegetables for cooking is peppers, um, are peppers, I guess. Even though I don't like the yellow and orange peppers and all that raw, I like them when they're cooked in with other items, especially like really flavorful items like sausage. So that's just what I go for. I don't like zucchini. It's a textural thing. I just I don't like it. Potatoes and I don't always get along. They can hurt my stomach really quickly. So I don't use a lot of potatoes. And I mean, I know there's other vegetables out there and I do need to get a little bit more adventurous and try cooking with some other ones. But for today, it's very pepper centric and onion centric. And frankly, I'm okay with that. One thing I didn't add to this bag was any seasoning, mainly because I couldn't think of what to add. So let me know down below, what would you season this with aside from salt and pepper, if anything, so that when I'm cooking, I can have some inspiration. Please let me know your suggestions in the comments down below. But you can see, just like all the other meals, add it all to the bag, give it a little bit of a shake, squeeze out the air and into the freezer it goes and that's enough for dinner and probably some leftovers for lunch the next day. Speaking of lunches, that brings us on to egg salad. And I know that egg salad is something that a lot of people know how to make, but I was making it, I had the camera going, so I figured I may as well include it in here and show you how I make it. Also, if you are recovering from gastric bypass surgery, this can be used for the soft food stage. You could probably get away with using it for the pureed stage as well if you really made sure that it was very, very smooth. Don't include the um, green onions or anything with any sort of bits to it. But this is kind of a staple for Barry and I because I can make up this big bowl and then what we do is we take the entire bowl to the office with us. We have a full-sized fridge and kitchen at the office. So we take this in a bowl, we take my protein wraps, we bring some bread for Barry, we slice up some tomatoes and some lettuce in a little container and bring that with us as well. And then we can just make sandwiches. We were able to make sandwiches for three days from this bowl. And again, that's about 10 to 12 eggs in there. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. I did cook up some extra hard boiled eggs for the kids because as long as I let them take the yolk out of it, they will eat the egg white. And if they're only gonna eat one part of an egg, that is the part I'd rather have them eat in any event. And they just make really easy snacks and really easy lunches for them. So, here you see it, there was eggs, there was salt and pepper. I added that smoked paprika, which I really like because it adds almost like a bacony kind of taste to it and it's not spicy at all. And then I used mayo as well. I have used vegan mayo in the past. It's just a matter of whatever we have on hand. And that is my egg salad. So we're gonna see a closing shot of the egg bites soon, but while we wait for that, I just wanted to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Thank you for all of your really kind comments that you've left on other videos. If you aren't subscribed, please go ahead and do so, and I will have some more freezer prep meals for you soon.